Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Grixis Mill. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you are doing exceptionally well. Today, we are jumping back into Explorer for our flex day with a Grixis Mill deck brought to us by somebody who also suggested a standard deck to us last week, which was Vamp, uh, Vampther. I believe I'm saying your name correctly. I'm calling you Vamp. Uh, I do really appreciate it. Uh, it really does mean a lot that you would submit these decks to us, so I do really appreciate it. Uh, again, guys, I just want to reiterate, if you've got a standard deck or an Explorer deck, uh, kind of mostly standard, but we're kind of jumping a little bit into Explorer with the channel. If you've got a suggestion for either of those formats, please let me know. I would love to test it out. Uh, hopefully have some fun with it and kind of get to highlight you guys a little bit more as the community behind it resolves. So that's really the goal. Um, all that to say, we're playing one of my all-time favorite strategies, which is Mill. Uh, fully understanding um, <laughs> that it's not a lot of people's favorites. So uh, if you're not a Mill fan, I totally get it. Don't stress. Uh, you can skip over this video if you want, but uh, I actually do love Mill and I think this deck is going to be really fun. So uh, it does feature a lot of the usual suspects uh, that we would expect to see. So we've got Ruin Crab, of course, that's going to take advantage of the Landfall trigger. One thing I would mention is with Ruin Crab and with being an Explorer, we do open up a lot of other land options with things like Fabled Passage, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so I would consider maybe trying that. But again, we're playing as is, so I'm leaving it as we have got it for now. Uh, we do have Blood Chief's Thirst here for a little bit of uh, removal along with Drown in the Lock, which is obviously a really good option for a mill deck. Uh, we've got three Maddening Cacophonies. Uh, which in general is a very good mill card. It's not quite the best, uh, in my opinion. I think Tasha's Hideous Laughter is a little bit better in terms of just how many cards you're going to get right off the bat. So uh, we do have basically six in total of these really big mill spells. Uh, one of the better cards, though, for an engine piece is Teferi's Tutelage. So whenever you draw a card, uh, you get to mill two cards from the opponent's deck. Uh, basically the stack and the idea is that you can really start to mill quite a lot by drawing cards, which is good because we've got things like Thirst for Discovery, which draws us three cards. We do have to discard two unless we discard a basic land, uh, which again, I think Vamp really did think about because we do have quite a number of basic islands here to ensure that we've got uh, a, a large number of basic lands. So uh, well planned there. Uh, but the idea being that we draw a lot of cards, hopefully triggering the tutelage, and then of course milling quite a lot on the opponent's side. Uh, we do have Predation here. Um, generally speaking, uh, in practice, I've only played one or two games with this one. In practice, I found myself playing this as a land more so than I did actually utilizing the spell side of this. Uh, but it is important to note that we actually can. Uh, and so it is nice to be able to pick apart the opponent's hand if need be. Uh, certainly a very powerful one. Uh, we do have Ronan, or Rowan, excuse me, uh, and Will uh, here to kind of cheapen things up for us. And of course, on the Rowan side, we actually can start copying spells uh, if we get to that minus four. So a very powerful ability. On the other side, Will allows us to uh, immediately draw two cards, which again, with the tutelage, is a very good ability. Uh, we do have Rao Storm Conduit, not a card I've seen in a long time. Uh, but when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, you copy it. And then of course you can choose new targets, but the idea being you get to copy something like a Hideous Laughter or a Maddening Cacophony or whatever we need to. Uh, then sitting at the very top, we have got Lord Xander, uh, which is obviously um, a little bit of a broken card. I think this actually plays more as a win more card in this version of the, the deck, but uh, it is a very good one. Obviously when it dies, target opponent sacrifices. Uh, when it attacks, defending player mills half of their deck, which is really what we're kind of focusing on. Uh, but when it enters the battlefield, the opponent also discards half their hands. So a lot of powerful abilities. Certainly hope we get to utilize that. So again, I think there's some considerations here for tooling this out, maybe teching it out a bit. But Vamp, I really am excited to try it as is. Hopefully have some fun with it. I love featuring the community decks on uh, on the, the channel here. So this is really a good a, a great opportunity to feature you guys. So Vamp, thank you so much. Let's jump right in, guys. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is actually a phenomenal start. We've got the Ruin Crab, the Cacophony, and the Tutelage with a little bit of removal backup as well. So I certainly will be happily keeping this. Uh, let's see what the opponent wants to do. It looks like they're going to mulligan down, and it's probably mono red. Yeah, 
uh, I am not surprised at all. <laughs> um, Mono Red, obviously, a very, very good, uh, excuse me, ladder grinder. Uh, and so this is not surprising at all. They're obviously going to be able to burn this. Um, the good news is we actually could deal with the Soul Scar Mage with the, um, ooh, very nice, with the Blood Chiefs Thirst. And actually will go ahead and do this. We don't want to take too much damage off the face of it. With the opponent mulliganing down as well, we're actually setting ourselves up to just be able to try and deal with most of what they're doing. Uh, get that tutelage down and really then start to kind of take over. So we'll see if it works. Uh, obviously, they do have a follow-up light up the stage here. So that's very good for them uh, just to be able to kind of refill the hand, of course. So let's go ahead and drop the tutelage now. Uh, we do want to get this going as quickly as we can. Fantastic. Um, I actually don't know what the best option is here. Um, hmm. I think it's going to be Maddening Cacophony, surprisingly. Uh, I don't love that, but uh, the idea being that we get to uh, draw cards and then disc and mill because of that is actually pretty important. Uh, and so we'll see how this actually goes. I'm, I'm curious. Interesting. Okay. So they're going to have to mill some more, which is great. Um, land is also good. There is a world where we play land second um, because we could get a Ruin Crab, but I think... Um, I think we're actually just going to want to kill the Rampaging Ferocidon. Uh, as unexciting as that might sound. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Again, just to really slow them down a little bit here, they're about to come in with quite a bit of damage, and so we do need to make sure that uh, we've got something going here. Um, we need to keep ourselves out of burn range as well, and so getting hit for four there would have been quite bad. Um, obviously, they still get to hit for quite a bit, though, here. And they are going to scry. They're going to throw it on the bottom, so my expectation is that's probably a land, although they could be going for a land with the... Uh, the den of the bugbear here. I wouldn't be terribly surprised. Um, okay. Uh, so we've got some options here. I think I actually do want to go for the thirst and hope we draw a blue source. I think that's going to be the best option for us uh, because it does allow us to do a little bit more. I'm actually going to decline. Uh, we will discard the land. Unfortunately. <sighs> hmm. Not sure what the right pick is here. I think it's probably got to be this. We do need to win the game at some point here, obviously, and so we do need to keep some of our mill outlets. Uh, we do get to kill the Kari Zev here, which is quite nice. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, Kari Zev is one that I want to kill um, for obvious reasons, just a really powerhouse creature or, uh, card, um, and so I don't want to leave that on the battlefield. It did get a land, so Den of the Bugbear is, of course, active. Uh, which we're obviously not happy with. We kind of need to win the game now, um, <laughs> which I don't think we're going to be able to do. Um, so the best bet is, of course, to do this. Um, decline. Let's, let's throw this back and this back. We'll play the Ruin Crab and then leave up Drown in the Lock, but probably just going to die here. I don't think we can really dig out our out of this at all, um, which is really sad, but it is just the reality of it. Uh, so they get to attack in. I think we're... Uh, technically, we could still stay in this for a turn. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, yes, we definitely can. All right. So now we get to do this. Let's go ahead and kill this um, before it can attack, uh, which does mean we can block here and we're at two, or excuse me, at one. Uh, all right. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> we tried really hard. Uh, unfortunately, no red mana either. Uh, again, a bit of a, a hindrance with the like non-Fable Passage play, but I'm going to go ahead and good game. Um, and again, I might be incorrect. It might be that Fable Passage is just not viable. Um, all right, cool. Let's go ahead. Let's move into game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. This is, I think, a keep. Uh, we've got the Thirst that can draw us into some stuff, and of course the Maddening Cacophony to start with, as well as the Laughter. So 
Uh, I certainly enjoy this hand. We'll see if we can go with it. I did in between games look up the Fable Passage because I wasn't sure if perhaps maybe it's just like banned uh, for some reason. I don't know if, why it would be, but I just figured I'd look. Uh, as it turns out, it is not. So Vamp, if you happen to watch this, first of all, thank you very much again for the deck suggestion. But two, did you have a reason not to include the Vamp? If you did, totally cool. I just wanted to see, you know, what your thoughts were there uh, and maybe get an idea of what you were kind of thinking. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think we just go for, uh, we should have instant speed done this. That was dumb. Uh... I'm gonna decline. I'm gonna throw you back. Hmm. I love all of these cards. Um. Might be ruin crap. As sad as that is. Uh, the reason I say that, this deck is going to have plenty of removal. It's a Rakdos deck. Uh, and so I'm not actually all that concerned with trying to get uh, extra stuff down there. I think I'd rather just um, push the envelope a little. All right, let's uh, throw this down. Uh, so we do want to copy the uh, the laughter. So I'm actually gonna go this route. We're gonna go ahead and plus two just to keep this on the field, uh, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and I'm actually gonna scry that to the bottom. Again, lands are kind of our best friend right now. Uh, if we do draw a land, trying to think yeah so what we could do is drop a row in uh then copy the laughter and get hopefully quite a number of cards out of the deck here um but we'll see of course so sure so they are going to take us down to four loyalty um thankfully this does not hit planeswalkers <laughs> that four damage could be quite bad um okay kalidus wow what a cool card um <clears throat> Okay, uh, so it is a land, but it is a tapped land. I will go ahead and play it, uh, because I do think we kind of just need to. We're going to minus two. Let's go ahead and hit him with the laughter here. This is going to copy it. Um, oh. And they just give up. I don't know why they just gave up. I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> but hey, we did it. We got the win. That was awesome. Uh, Vamp, we did it, my friend. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three, and definitely a keep. We've got Ruin Crab, we've got the Blood Chiefs Thirst, so then we got some very solid turn three drops, so uh, as well, we actually have all of our colors of mana, so this is certainly a strong start. Hopefully, hopefully, we can get another win. Uh, I do really love a good mill deck, so again, I just want to say, Vamp, I do really appreciate you uh, submitting a new deck for us. I really do appreciate it. It's great to see... Uh, the creativity here, unfortunately, they have a fatal push. Not a huge surprise. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, I think we'll hold on to that. I don't think we have to pull the trigger on that quite yet. Um, next turn, we've got the uh, tutelage, of course. Um, and then we'll we'll kind of get a, a good glimpse of what they're actually up to here. Great card, for sure. Don't love to see that. Uh, but they got it. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and just tutelage. Uh, we're kind of fueling their fire with the Graveyard Trespasser here, which I understand is not ideal, but um, I think it'll be okay. I think we will get rid of one of the Blood Chiefs Thirsts here. Get a couple of uh, good picks here. Uh, so it looks like they're just going to be an Abzan kind of uh, mid rangey deck, which is obviously a very good... Uh, yeah, Siege Rhino. Certainly a great option uh, for the opponent to be on. Um, don't love that we're going to probably have a hard time here, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see. So they do need to mill a couple more cards. Good hits, again. Uh, very happy to see that. All right. Um, so what's the best play for us here? We do have Drown in the Lock. Uh, we do also have... Just Thirst for Discovery to kind of get some mill side of things going. We actually also just can wait uh, if we need to. Um, we actually do have this, but I don't know that I love playing that out here. Um, and we do kind of need to play something just to not get this flipped, I suppose. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're actually going to... Let's make sure. All right, so 
Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. We're just going to go ahead and take out that Seed Rhino. Uh, that keeps this from flipping. It also just gets another card in the graveyard. But next turn, we've got the Blood Chief's Thirst that we can then use here uh, if, if we need to. Um, but we'll see. Or we might just need to kill that. <laughs> uh, that's a lot bigger. Um, yeah, kind of wishing we had gone for the Predation, I guess. But again, I, I feel like we made the right call given what we knew at the time. So I'm not actually terribly upset by this. Uh, okay, so we can do this. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's do this. It's going to mill three. And then let's go ahead. Ah, we can't, can we? We don't have double black. Ugh. Should have played this. Um, let's just see what's in the hand here. Um, not expecting much. Yeah, looks like nothing. Uh, so they actually just have us here if they want to. That's a good game for sure. They could just go ahead and basically kill that. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and concede. We have time for a fourth game, guys. So let's actually jump into that really quick. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys. Wow, what a bad start to the game four. Let's go ahead and easy mulligan on that one uh and let's see this is better it's not great i'll be honest <laughs> um we need a third land uh but we do have drowned on the lock available to us and of course i guess we can run out that as a third land if we need to yeah i mean <laughs> we'll try it uh we do get the scry here which is quite nice we do not need another row so i'm gonna go ahead and throw that one back um we may end up just having to play the predation I don't love that, I'll be honest, but uh, that might just have to be the way we play. Okay, uh, it isn't, so that's good. Um, yeah, I think we'll we'll go this route. I'm not necessarily expecting the predation to actually hit that much. That's the only trick, so it might be a, it might have been that playing it out there was probably the, just the best option, uh, just so we didn't run into mana issues later. So. Potentially the wrong call, but we do have our clear water pathway, which is going to get the tutelage down here. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now the question is, do we go for the tutelage or do we go for the predation? Um, I'm actually going to go for this. So here's the thing. I, I Obviously they're mono white, but they could have a lot of really powerful stuff. And so I'd actually really like to be able to get some stuff out of here. Okay. Um... I think we take the Skyclave Apparition since we know we're going to play the Tutelage. I don't love the Sparring Regimen, uh, to be honest. Um, but I think that's probably okay. Yep, we're going to go ahead and play that out. That is going to go uh, go ahead and throw a counter here on the Hopeful Initiate, which is certainly a good option. Uh, but importantly, they can't hit our Teferi's Tutelage with the Skyclave Apparition, which was going to be their play, I assume. Um... So, let's go ahead and do this first. Interesting. Um, with that in mind, what do we need to do? I think we'll actually throw this back. They're going to have to mill a couple cards here, which is great. I am going to throw this out for the land. Uh, and now we've got some options here. We'll we'll see what we end up doing. But uh, the idea being what we could do is drown in the lock, get this off the field. Um, alternatively, we can try for the Ralzeric, but keeping in mind they do have a Fateful Absence in hand uh, that they'll be able to deal with it. Uh, the Portable Hold does not hit, crucially, uh, anything. <laughs> uh, so this is a literal do-nothing card, uh, which is great. I'm kind of surprised they played it at all. Uh, it doesn't necessarily seem like a great play, but hey, that's fine. I'll take it. Um, and there's the environmental sciences. So what we can do is force the issue. So if we play Ral, essentially they have to kill it. Uh, otherwise, they, I mean, we can start doubling up on some stuff. And that's a little too scary, I would think, for them. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they just uh, go for the power plays. We could, we could see a lot of different stuff here. So... Land isn't bad, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I am actually going to go this route. Uh, again, knowing that they can easily just kill Rel. Um, but I think I'd rather them do that than anything else at the moment. Um, 
And yeah, I think that's worth keeping. Uh, my thing is we do just need to draw further into the deck. So at some point, I feel like that's probably just the better option. Uh, now they've got four, five mana. So they could play both of these spells knowing that we may just not have a creature. Interesting. So they can hit the tutelage? Why? That doesn't seem optimal. Seems like they should hit the tutelage, so that way... Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, okay. So they are going to get some big plays out here, which is certainly scary, but we actually do just have Double Drown on the lock to deal with it, so I'm actually not that concerned. Kind of curious to see what they do. I guess they can just kill this if they'd like. Uh, although they don't have the mana to do so right now, so... With that in mind, we are just going to go ahead and kill this one. Uh, yeah. I think that's for the best. I'm honestly... I don't love doing this, but this keeps them from being able to kill the tutelage at any given point. So they have no way to kill it in hand. If they were to attack in, they would be able to get the counter and then they could actually, uh, in response, kill the tutelage. So we would have had to have done that before they actually deal damage anyway. Uh, so I think this is just for the best. As much as I, I wish we had a better option there. Um, excellent. Basically, we just keep killing their stuff as best we can. Um, do we kill this? Or do we just go for the thirst? Can they kill us next turn? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and thirst. Um, we could have waited, I suppose, but I'd actually like to see if we just get like a Ruin Crab or something this turn, uh, because I would like to play something if we can get it. Um, ugh. Unfortunately, not great options here. <clears throat> um, represents six cards. Hmm. Unfortunately, I think it's both of these. That really sucks. Um, so they're going to mill quite a number of cards here, which is nice. <clears throat> I would really love like a Tasha's Laughter. That would be really helpful against a deck like this. Um, let's go ahead and drop the Ruin Crab. And now at the very least, like we get a block in if we need it. Uh, we don't have to pull that trigger of course yet, but now lands are actual live draws and then we can just kill this Brutal Cathar next turn. Um, that was It's tricky. I find myself not wanting to discard any of the cards that we're finding. Uh, and maybe that's just me incorrectly assessing, you know what I mean? I mean, that's obviously I'm not a, a pro player, so obviously that could be an option. Um, but I just feel like there's so many important pieces to this puzzle uh, that it's a little bit tricky. I, I find it kind of difficult. Nice. Uh, that's very good. Okay. So they're going to get a 1-1 counter here. They're going to get a 1-1 one, one creature. Draw a card. Okay, so we can pop this just to see what we get, uh, although I'm not super optimistic. Yep, uh, that mills a couple more cards. Uh, okay, and we're just dead, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately that's not going to be enough, they just, de they just have us. Uh, that's cool, let's jump into the wrap up guys. All right, so first and foremost, Vamp, again, I just want to say a huge thank you to you. I really do appreciate you submitting this list. Again, I didn't want to make changes to it. There were a couple nuances that I feel like we could consider, though. Uh, and again, you may have a reason for either not including these cards or including these cards. So feel free. Let me know in the comment section what your opinions are on this. Uh, first and foremost, I don't think the Ruin Crab is 100% well utilized when you don't have things like Fabled Passage, even something like as silly as Evolving Wilds, obviously Fabled Passage is much better. Uh, I do keep in mind, obviously, that that does mean uh, you could potentially run into a tapped mana issue. That being said though, you also solve an issue, which is that you can fetch obviously whatever color you need, uh, given whatever circumstance you're in. So there is some opportunity there for optimization. Uh, I would also suggest while Lord Xander is really fun, uh, I don't think he's at his best in this deck. I think this deck is looking to be efficient uh, and ideally double up using something like Rao, uh, 
uh, on a Tasha's Hideous Laughter or a Maddening Cacophony, we really found ourselves discarding a lot of those cards as well, which was, I think, possibly just my own error, so keeping in mind. But I do also think that um, you're, you're balancing quite a bit of things, and I think narrowing the focus of the deck mostly to mill uh, by including the full four of potentially Maddening Cacophony and the Laughter might be just a better way to go. Um, again, that could be wrong. I don't know, but I just, I'm curious to know if you have tried that uh, because I do think that could be helpful. So again, just my opinions. And again, guys, anybody watching, please feel free to share your thoughts on this. If you think it could be better, uh, obviously I didn't play perfectly, so I'm sure there are some errors there, but it was still a fun time. Uh, so Vamp, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you sharing. Uh, again, guys, if you have a deck that you would like to share with us, either Standard or Explorer, feel free to. I would love to see what you guys have uh, to offer and we can throw those onto the video page or the YouTube page and uh, hopefully share that with the, the greater community. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Love you guys. I will see you tomorrow.